So today's lesson 10.1 is on the Pythagorean theorem and its converse. Our objective is to understand the Pythagorean theorem more deeply and discover the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, some vocabulary that we are learning. Well, what is the hypotenuse of a right triangle? What is the leg or legs of a right triangle? Uh, what is the Pythagorean theorem? And what are Pythagorean triples? So that's the vocab we're going to cover. So there's a picture here. It shows the hypotenuse. It shows the legs um, on a right triangle. So a triangle containing a right angle. So in a right triangle, um, the side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. Notice that that blue side labeled C is across from the right angle. The other two sides are called legs. In the figure below, A and B represent the lengths of the legs. Um, and as I said before, C represents the length of the hypotenuse. There is a special relationship between the lengths of the legs and the length of the hypotenuse. The relationship is known today as the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so we'll learn what that theorem says. But for now, make sure you know what legs look like on a right triangle and what a hypotenuse looks like on a right triangle. So here is the Pythagorean theorem. It relates the lengths of the legs to the length of the hypotenuse. So in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs equals the square of the length of the hypotenuse. Um, in, as a formula, we write a squared plus b squared equals c squared, because if you square the length a and you add it to uh, the length b squared, you get the length c squared. Uh, they provide some historical connection here, talking about um, uh, different people around the world who uh, used the Pythagorean theorem. A Pythagorean triple. Uh, three positive integers that work in the Pythagorean equation are called Pythagorean triples. For example, 8, 15, 17 is a Pythagorean triple because 8 squared plus 15 squared is equal to 17 squared. You can try it on a calculator and see that it works. Here are nine sets of Pythagorean triples, so all of these work in the same way. Now, what is the converse of the Pythagorean theorem? Uh, it's basically just kind of in the opposite direction of the Pythagorean theorem. It says that if the lengths of the three sides of a triangle satisfy the Pythagorean equation, then you know it's a right triangle. So if you have three side lengths and a squared plus b squared equals c squared is true for those three side lengths of the triangle, you know it must be a right triangle. So let's do some examples here. Um, in this one, they ask us to find length C. All measurements are in centimeters. So C is across from that right angle, so that's the hypotenuse. That's the longest one, longest side. We're going to use this equation. That's the Pythagorean equation. I will often refer to it as the Pythagorean theorem as well. So I plug in values for A and B. The lengths of the legs are 12 and 15, so I plug those in for A and B, and I don't know C yet. That's what we're trying to find. Squaring means times itself, so in this next step we do 12 times 12 to get 144. We do 15 times 15 to get 225. When you add those together, you get 369. So we know that our c squared, like c times c, is equal to 369. If you want to find just c, and you know c squared, you have to square root both sides. So if you square root c squared, you get c. And then the square root of 369 is about 19.2. In other words, about 19.2 times 19.2 uh, gets you 369. So that's our length for C, and that's in centimeters, because they said all measurements are in centimeters. 
Now, in this one, we're trying to find A. It's a bit different because it's a, it's a leg that we don't know. We know the hypotenuse, we know the longest side, we don't know one of the legs. We still use the same equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but we plug in for the things we know. We know the longest side, the hypotenuse is 13, so that's why I put a 13 in for c. We know one of the legs is 5, so I plug that in for b, and uh, we don't know the other leg, a, so that's why it's still a letter. 5 squared is 25, 13 squared is 169, so that's how I come up with that next step. If we subtract 25 on both sides, uh, we get that a squared is equal to 144. And so then, if you have a squared and you want to get just a, you have to square root both sides. The square root of 144 is 12 because 12 times 12 is 144. So we know that a, that side length, is 12 centimeters. I'll let you see that a little bit longer, sorry. Okay, one last one. So sometimes there's a triangle on a larger solid or a larger shape, um, and you can still use the Pythagorean theorem. So here they want us to find S, but if you notice, S is part of a triangle where the legs are length 10 and 24. So we can still use the this equation 10 and 24 are legs, so that's like, or the lengths of the legs, so that's like a and b. We plug 10 and 24 in for a and b. 10 squared is 100, 24 squared is 576, and then when we add those together, we get the hypotenuse squared, s squared. So I replaced c with s because s is the hypotenuse. 100 plus 576 is 676, and that's equal to s squared. In order to get just s and not s squared, we square root both sides. The square root of 676 comes out nicely to 26 centimeters, so s is equal to 26 centimeters. Okay, what about some more, um, I guess, real life uh, problems. That's what we have coming up next. So here we have a picture of a ladder against a wall and it forms a triangle and it says how high up on the wall will a 20-foot ladder touch if the foot of the ladder is placed five feet from the wall. So notice the triangle against the wall makes a uh, right triangle. It's got a right angle here. The hypotenuse, the longest side, the one across from the right angle, is 20 feet, so that's our like our C value. One of our legs is 5 feet, and then the other one we don't know, it's the height. Um, so if we go to the next page, we'll see all the steps to solve this, but we can set up that equation, we can plug in for the values we know, and then we can figure out what the height is. So we plug in to a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We know that 5 is one of the legs. 20 is the hypotenuse. That's why we plug that in for c. And b becomes h because in our problem it's called h, but it's one of the legs, so you can plug in h for b. 5 squared is 25. 20 squared is 400. If you subtract 25 from both sides, you realize that h squared is equal to 375, and then we take the square root of both sides to get just h, and that's 19.4. And units were in feet, so I guess that's in feet, and that means that the top of the ladder will touch the wall about 19.4 feet up from the ground. Finally, um, it says, a steel pole 150 centimeters in length has been placed in the ground ready for cement to seal it in place. To check to see if it is perpendicular to the ground, the contractor has measured a distance of 180 centimeters from the top of the pole to 80 centimeters from the base of the pole on the ground. Is the pole perpendicular to the ground? So the idea behind this one is we know that 
this picture forms a right triangle if the numbers satisfy the Pythagorean equation. So if they satisfy that equation, we know that it's a right triangle, and then we know the pole is perpendicular to the ground because they'll make a right angle. If they don't satisfy the equation, then it's not a right triangle. So they plug things in to see if it's true. They plug in 80 is one of the legs, 150 is one of the legs, and then this longest side, 180, is the, um, is the hypotenuse. But it looks like 80 squared plus 150 squared is equal to this, 2, or 28,900. But when you square 180, you get 32,400. So it looks like a squared plus b squared is less than c squared. So the triangle is not a right triangle. And we know the pole is not perpendicular to the ground. So that one was using the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to determine whether or not a triangle was a right triangle. Okay, um, so I'm going to have you do your exercises from problems in these slides. Um, we did in the slides examples uh, for 1, um, 2, and 5. In the homework I assign you 3, 4, 6. I also assign you all of these problems, um, I think two of these ones, and then I think on this one uh, I assign you 19, 20, and 23. Make sure that you show all your work uh, because the answers to these problems um, are at the end. So if I just see answers, I have no idea if you did any work. Um, so make sure you show work. Uh, in order to receive credit for the homework that's due on Friday for 10.1. Okay, good luck. Email me if you have questions, uh, and I hope this video was at least a little bit helpful.